And I just want to say here, I was really surprised at how easy it was to cut. I thought it was going to shatter, but it cut straight through without any problem at all. Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Wendy here from Tim Pish Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Now, I don't know why, but I've got a thing about skulls and bones and skeletons, actually. But skulls mostly. I remember when I was 12 doing a carving in soap in my art class at school and I chose a skull. So obviously I was into skulls then and I don't quite know why. I think at one point I wanted to be a nurse, but then that didn't pan out when I realised I fainted at somebody else's blood. I was okay with my own though. Anyway, <laughs> because I've got a thing about skulls, every now and then I have to make a skull. And I've decided that I've been mulling over this for quite some time. I've decided to make a half and half skull. Not done this before. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to be using Let's Resin Casting Powder, also known as Magic Pour. But I'm also going to be using resin in this product. It's not just about a casting compound. Now with any casting compound or eco pour, whatever you want to call them, you always put the powder into the water. Now you only get a short time to mix this. So you're better off mixing as you go. I still got a few lumps in the bottom of mine because I did at the end, as you saw, pour all the powder in. Best off doing it bit by bit really. But I'm not putting any colour in here. I'm going to leave it completely white. And that is because I want a completely white skull. So once it's all mixed, which doesn't take long, I'm just filling up the skull. Now, because there are overhangs in this mould, I'm giving it a good swish round to make sure I get out any potential stuck bubbles. As far as I'm aware, there's no point in putting casting compound in a pressure pot because it won't make any difference. I haven't tried it, but if you have, please let me know in the comment section below if it works or if it doesn't or if it actually makes any difference whatsoever. Because I don't think it will make any difference. But who knows? Anyway, I'm going to fill this skull right up to the top and hopefully I've mixed just about the right amount because I measured it and used the calculations that I've used before. Now I will link the video for that in the top right hand corner if you want to figure out how to calculate the right amount of casting powder for the mould that you're using. So just about an hour later I can demould. And I'm using exactly the same mould throughout this video. I don't have more than one skull mould. This is the Let's Resin skull mould. And I don't have any more than just this one. Just so you know. Because as I understand it, people that use casting compounds or jesmonite don't like using the same mould for a resin. And I did because I only had one skull mould. I didn't have a problem with it. So why would you not use the same moulds? Please, someone enlighten me, because I have no clue. I just want to say a huge thank you to Let's Resin, because they are sponsoring this video, and everything I use in this video is Let's Resin brand. All the links to their products will be in the description box below, together with a 10% discount code. Anyway, eventually it came out of the mould, I took it to the garage, and I cut it in half. And I just want to say here, I was really surprised at how it easy it was to cut. I thought it was going to shatter, but it cut straight through without any problem at all. Okay, so far so good. This is where it gets a little bit experimental. I'm going to use some metal leaf size on one half of the skull and I'm completely covering that half in the size. You wait 15 minutes, it goes completely clear and then it is tacky and you can cover it with different things. So this is glitter from Let's Resin. I used it in a different video and I'll link that video in the top right hand corner. This is the purple variation and it is a extremely fine glitter that kind of is kind of like mica. Well, you can dust molds with it like mica and it'll stick to it like mica does, but it's actually a glitter and it's quite holographic 
it's beautiful stuff and it comes in a pack of six i think different colors now bringing it up to the camera you can see there's a couple of little spots there where i'd missed it with the glue so i had to go back and fill those in but once i'd filled them in then it was time to try and get this half of the skull back into the mold this was the hardest bit this is my second attempt. Honestly, it was really hard to get it back so that the eye was in the eye socket. I didn't want to disrupt the colour, so I was trying not to touch the colour at the front. If I didn't have the colour on it, it wouldn't have been a problem. But I really didn't want to disrupt all that colour. I did make a few marks on it and I did have to touch it up later as well. I mean, if you think about it, how often does a resin artist put a piece back in the mould? I don't do that. I don't think I've ever done that maybe once or twice but certainly not in a 3d mold but after about 10 15 minutes of struggling it suddenly popped in and then i was like why couldn't i've done that before and there we go back in the mold now i'm going to use some let's resin fast cure resin because i'm going to put this in the pressure pot with fast cure resin it does tend to have more bubbles because it has less time to release them but if you're putting it in a pressure pot there's no problem whatsoever you don't have to worry about bubbles you can mix it up put as many bubbles in there as you want doesn't matter because the pressure pot will take those bubbles away well it won't take them away it pushes them down until they're minute so you can't see them however you do have to be careful that any trapped air you have to get out so make sure you don't forget that bit and then i put it in the pressure pot Now, because it's fast cure resin, this was just four hours later. So all this so far has been done in exactly the same day. I didn't know how easy it would be to scratch the magic paw, however. And I didn't know how the magic paw would react to the isopropyl alcohol. So I used the isopropyl alcohol on one side and leverage on the other. And to my joy... It came out beautifully. The resin has soaked in to the magic pour and has bonded really beautifully. You can see there are, there's kind of a shiny line down the center, just right of the center where the resin has mixed with the magic pour. It still needs to be sealed in parts though because there's no resin on it. But I absolutely love this dual skull. So let's see what else we can do. So I got out my thinking cap and I come up with hot glue gun. Now I know hot glue guns can be used to kind of draw patterns. So I figured on the other half of the skull, I'd draw patterns. Now my way of thinking is it's going to be raised and hopefully it would kind of look like a brain. That's what I'm hoping. So I start drawing my lines with the hot glue. Now, if you put hot glue on hot glue, it does tend to melt the bit that's underneath. So there wasn't really much point in doing the pattern at this point because it's going to be covered up. I'm going to do it in layers and I'm going to build it up. So it kind of looks like a brain. That's the plan. And to start with, I didn't even know if it was going to stay stuck to this magic pole. Once it's all gone cold and solid again i cover it with the metal leaf glue you can't really see the detail here at the moment because it's white on white but when i start adding color you will see hopefully <laughs> what i'm talking about i'm going to use the bluish aqua type color from the let's resin glitters box it's a really again another holographic color and it's really beautiful blue color I wanted two contrasting colours here because I want to see the difference between the briny area and the solid area. And as I didn't want the two different colours to mix, I did the bottom part first and then the top part. And now I've chosen the pink. Again, lovely colour, holographic pink. You can't go wrong with these holographic colours. I do think they are gorgeous. And this is where you'll start to see the detail of the hot glue that I've put in there. I have tried really hard not to leave any air pockets in here and covered up and filled in all the holes. But it still should look something like a brain, hopefully. What do you think? Do you think that looks like a brain? 
it will be interesting to see how this one comes out. I didn't know if the clock glue would actually stay stuck to the magic paw, but I never had a problem or issue with that at all. And now it's all coloured, you can really see the detail of that hot glue. Brains. Now some of the glue went over the sides and the glitter obviously sticks to the glue. So I'm just going around with a baby wipe and cleaning up all around the edges to make it look nice and neat before it goes back in the mould. Again, I've got to get this thing back in the mould. I'm not looking forward to this. It did take me a few tries actually because some of the hot glue was in the way of the eye socket and turning it inside out does not work. I don't know why I tried that. So I had to take it out and cut away a little bit of the hot glue and cover that in pink too. I filled it up with resin and I put it in the pressure pot. Again, I used the Quick Cure resin and this was the same day. However, it's the second day of this project because I did the first skull first day and this is the second day. And I do plan on doing one more. But I knew this time that the isopropyl alcohol was fine being squirted in the mould with the magic pour and it popped out beautifully. And I absolutely love it. I really do. I think it's come out really cool. I love those colours. And I love the fact that I've done the 3D image thing with a dual skull. I, I just love it. I, I It came out as I'd hoped it would. You know that feeling? You're in love, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, my last attempt, this is something totally different. Now, as you can imagine, I don't have half a skull left because I've done two halves. So this one is going to be very slightly different. I am making enough magic pour for half of the skull this time which is 150 grams of powder and 50 grams of water. And I'm going to angle the skull, propping it up, so that I pour it in and it will fill up at an angle. I've also got a piece of silicon sheet, patterned silicon sheet from my website. This one is a piece of dancing flowers that I make with Let's Resin silicon. And I've just cut it into a half brain type of shape. And when I can figure out which way the skull mould has got to be, then I can figure out if this little piece of silicon will fit in there. When I'm happy that the mould is facing the right way, then I'm going to choose a colour. Now I've used the pink and the purple. I've also used the aqua. So I think I'm going to go with silver. The silver holographic is a stunning colour. I've seen it used on Instagram as so many pieces and it is absolutely beautiful and it's going to work in the same way that mica does. You can put it onto a silicon mould and it stays there like mica does. You do blow off the excess like you do with any mica and you have a beautiful piece of coloured silicon. Once I've picked it up and got rid of all the excess you can see how stunningly holographic that silver is. It dances with every colour you can possibly think of. So I'm going to make up my mix of Magic Pour. I won't put you through the whole thing with this. It is literally mixing the same. I'm keeping it white. I'm keeping it white because I like the fact that it's half a white skull because skulls are white. I don't know why, I just have to do it white. And once I'm happy that I've got the right amount in there, the tiny little bit of magic pour I have left is going on the top of the silicon inlay to try and get rid of any potential air that might be stuck on there. And I'm just gonna give it a little wipe over to try and get it in all the areas. I flip it round upside down on my mixer and just slip it in moving it around so that it is in the area nicely. And an hour later, I can take out the inlay. And I know from what I've tried before, the mica or glitter will stay there. It could come off in my hands, but it's not going to come out of this mould. It's going to stay in there. I'm going to clean up the mould a bit though, because there's lots of little bits of magic pool over the place and the tweezers will get most of them out and a bit of tape 
will get the rest out because I want it nice and clean for when I pour in the resin. So this magic pour will stay in the mould. No more putting it back in. It's going to stay there, thankfully. Again, I've got my quick four hour cure resin and I'm just filling up this mould to the top with clear resin. I do go in with a tool to try and get rid of any stuck air that may be under those eye sockets because that is potentially a problem and we don't want that, do we? And then, yeah, goes into the pressure pot. Oh dear, looks like my runner's run out of steam. Anyway, four hours later and I can demold. I'm really excited to see this one. I really am. I know it's going to be silver, I know it's going to be patterned, but what is it going to look like? Do you think the angle will make that much difference? Well, the patterns come out absolutely beautiful and I absolutely love the way the angle has gone across the top of the head. I adore this, I really do. But I do especially like the way that some of the magic paw has gone over the teeth area. I think that's really cool. I think I probably will put these three skulls up on my website for sale, even though I absolutely love them. I might keep one. I might keep one. We'll see. <laughs> but I do love them. I just can't keep everything I make. Well, I think my skeleton runner has recovered okay. It looks like she's taking selfies. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one and I hope you've got something out of it. Thanks, Let's Resin, for sponsoring this video. I've thoroughly enjoyed making these skulls. I always have to make them at least twice a year. And this was one of them. But I really like the colours too. I love how bright they are. I just love everything about them. If you have any questions or comments, please do use the comment section below. And press that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. And it does help my channel out. And a thumbs up is always welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Come back and see me next week because you never know what I'm going to be up to. I never know what I'm going to be up to. Have a great week. Happy crafting and bye for now.